Hey, welcome back to my channel, Being Integrated for all you beings who are integrating. And the topic today really speaks to the name of my channel, Being Integrated, because it's very much about integrating parts of ourselves. And I maybe haven't talked about this explicitly yet on the channel, but it was very much the inspiration for the channel, not just this topic, but uh, parts integration, integrating ourselves, all of that. So in this video, we're going to explore overcoming or working with or integrating our inner critic, this part of ourself that is critical of us, that's you know maybe not so nice. And for this video, I'm drawing heavily on a modality of psychotherapy called IFS, or Internal Family Systems. It's a type of therapy that was developed by a man named Richard Schwartz, or often called Dick Schwartz. And he was a family therapist, but he realized uh, the limitations of family therapy. And when he was doing one-on-one -on -one work with people, he started to see that we all have these different parts. We all have these voices in our heads, and they have different characters, they have a different tone of voice, and they have different intentions or they serve different purposes. And the one that a lot of us, maybe most of us, struggle with a lot is the inner critic, this part that is very critical of what we do. So when Dick Schwartz was exploring these different parts that we have, he realized that they actually relate to each other differently, that they exist in relationship to one another. And it's very similar how family members exist in relationship to each other. And what internal family systems is really doing, it's treating these different parts of ourself like a dysfunctional family. And if you're to do family therapy, what you're doing is you're attuning to each individual, you're empathizing with them, you're seeing what does this person really need? What is motivating their behavior? What are they afraid of? What do they desire? And you're understanding each individual in the family and you're understanding how ultimately they're usually trying for the same thing. They usually all want to be happy. They all want to get along, but they have different ideas of one, how the other people are behaving or what the other people need. And they may uh, misunderstand each other, misunderstand each other's needs and not communicate well with each other. And we all know everyone talks about communication and relationships being really essential. We can't really communicate with each other if we don't really understand each other and if we don't really understand ourselves. So often we don't really know what our own needs are, so we're not able to really communicate them. So Internal Family Systems explores these parts and explores what purpose does each part serve? What is the intention of this part? Why is it here? What is it trying to do? And it puts forth this radical theory that all of our parts are actually trying to help us, that they all actually have our back, but they're often misguided. They misunderstand what we need or they don't. Uh, understand what a uh, helpful approach is. The mindfulness perspective on this, which I think is also a really important piece that very much exists in internal family systems, is that these voices in our heads, this internal critic, is not us. It's just a voice in the head. It is almost like a character that we created, in this case, for our protection. And so the first piece is not identifying with it, which internal family system calls unblending, which is we are de-identifying. We're no longer thinking that this part is us or that this voice is us. It's actually just a part that exists. And this makes it all less intense. We realize that not only is this part not us, but it's speaking to another part that isn't us. And often that part is a hurt child that's been overwhelmed with feelings that isn't able to be fully open to uh, all experiences. And so we want to get in contact with a part that we might call a mature adult or even a true self part, a part of us that is able to take responsibility for our feelings and actually feel what's coming up, that is willing to feel discomfort, that is willing to feel the sting of failure or rejection or the shame that comes up around mistakes that we made. This is what it means to be a mature adult, to be uh, fully integrated, is to feel things fully, to be with our experience as it is without trying to escape the discomfort. Now, I just want to say that parts theory is not unique to internal family systems. It exists in a lot of modalities. I originally trained in Gestalt psychotherapy, which does a lot of parts work, and we actually uh, put different parts in different chairs, and then we inhabit them, we embody them, and have conversations between them to help work out resolutions. So that's one way of doing parts work. In this video, we're not going to uh, jump from chair to chair inhabiting these parts, but we're going to do something very similar in our minds. So when we're working with a critical part, with this part that's criticizing us, we're first looking at why. What is it doing? What does it think it's doing? And how does it think it's helping? 
And underneath all of this is what is it actually afraid of? That this part is actually a protector part. It's trying to protect us. So we have to explore what is it trying to protect us from? What is it afraid might happen if it wasn't there? And when we understand this part, when we really empathize, and when it feels heard, it feels like we're actually listening to it, then we can maybe form a better relationship with it, and it won't be so angry, it won't be so critical. It's similar to working with a person who's highly critical, someone who's mean and angry and treats others badly. Telling them to stop it isn't usually going to help very much, but instead trying to explore underneath what is their real motivation, what is actually motivating their behavior, what's motivating them to be mean and angry, and often there's a sadness. Underneath anger, there's always a sadness or a grief or a pain. And people go to anger because it's easier to be angry about something than it is to actually feel the impact of what's happening. So this critical part is often angry and critical because it doesn't want to feel the sadness. It wants to avoid the sadness and pain, things like failure and shame. It's really trying to protect us against feeling these things. So if we're going to work with this part, if we're going to overcome it, if we're going to befriend it so it's not so angry and critical anymore, we have to really acknowledge it and we have to reassure it that we can feel these things, that we can feel the pain of failure, we can feel shame. And this is the hard part, that to overcome the critical part, we have to show that we can feel what it doesn't want us to feel. And if we can really make a strong case for it, if we can actually go into these feelings and feel them, uh, we can dialogue with this part and reassure it. And over time, it can start functioning in a more constructive or helpful way. So that being said, if you're game to start exploring this part, to start working with it, let's jump right into the practice. So you can start by getting comfortable in your chair, closing your eyes if that's comfortable. If not, you can leave them open. And taking some deep breaths and to just notice how we're feeling. And we're going to bring to mind some time that this critical part showed up. Maybe it's there all the time. Maybe it just shows up occasionally. And just notice what it's saying. How is it criticizing you? And see if you can find a pattern in different times that it criticizes. Any memories that come up, just notice what feelings those bring up and reassure yourself it's okay to feel those things. And just really looking at what patterns, what's the theme, what's the character of this part that's critical? What kind of things does it criticize you for? And now we're asking, what is this part afraid of? This part is criticizing you because it's trying to keep you from feeling something. It might be trying to keep you from doing something out of fear of what might happen. So look at what is this part really afraid of? What does it fear might happen if you don't listen to it? If you were to go ahead and do the things that it was trying to stop you from doing? What's the worst that could happen? Just notice whatever feelings come up and that's okay. to see if you can feel into the experience, if you can feel maybe the fear, whatever other feelings might come up, sadness, shame. It's all okay, it's all welcome here. This is a safe space, you're safe right now to dip in and feel these things. And 
Just being with this, experiencing, noticing what's happening, noticing if the part's coming up, and realizing that that part isn't us, that's just a voice. And it's trying to protect another part, which also isn't really us. And now, is it appropriate? Are we at the place where we can ask the part maybe to back off a bit and reassure it that we are okay to feel those things? Maybe it's trying to keep us from taking an action because it's afraid we might fail. So in that case, we would have to assure it that we can fail, that whatever feelings come with failure, we can feel them. It's finding this mature adult part of ourselves that's able to deal with the repercussions of our actions, that's able to feel what might happen if things don't go as we hope they go. And just notice how this part reacts when we try to negotiate with it. Is it listening? Is it cooperative? Remember, it's acting out of fear. This part's very afraid for us. And so it may take some convincing. We may have to revisit a lot and get more comfortable with it, build trust with it, allow it to feel acknowledged and heard before it starts listening to what we have to say. There was probably a time in the past where we did experience something that was overwhelming, something that we didn't feel ready to experience. And as a result, this part is trying to protect us from feeling that again. So just acknowledging that, that it's just trying to protect you from feeling that way. And asking if maybe, instead of it being so critical, if this can be more of a discussion, you can have more of a dialogue with it. Maybe negotiate something that's halfway. Again, noticing how you're feeling, what thoughts are coming up, where the resistances are, and that's all okay. It's really just acknowledging all of these things. And then finally, we want to thank this part. We want to thank it for trying to protect us, even though it hasn't always been helpful. It's been trying. And so we want to at least acknowledge that, that it's actually trying to protect us and thank it for at least trying, for caring about us. And just notice what happens now if anything changes. And again, trying to reassure ourselves that whatever feelings or thoughts come up in this process, it's all okay. It's all okay to feel these things and have these thoughts. It's all normal. And then coming out, opening your eyes, coming back to the room, to the space, noticing how you're feeling now. Okay, so this was a very brief introduction. This was just dipping our toes in. Internal family systems is a huge, deep, rich modality with so many aspects, so many introductory uh, practices to get to know these parts, ways of working with different parts, understanding different types of parts. It's really great, so I encourage you. There's a lot of resources out there you can explore. 
There's a great audiobook by Richard Schwartz called Greater Than the Sum of Our Parts that takes you through these practices. There's also a man named Jay Early who wrote a book about doing self-therapy with internal family systems, and it's also a great way to do this work yourself. So this was like really barely dipping our toes in. If it didn't work for you, that's okay because I really didn't go through all the setups that you know that you might do in a more complete system. I just wanted to introduce this idea, this topic, and kind of open up the paradigm, allow you to see your parts in a different light because that's really the powerful thing of seeing the parts differently, seeing that these, these things aren't us and they're not actually against us. They actually have our best intentions at heart, even though it might not seem like it. Also, if you're working with trauma, there's a really uh, great psychotherapist and author named Janina Fisher who writes about working with the traumatized parts of self, about how we can integrate the traumatized parts. And she's fantastic. Her work is really rich and deep and there's a lot to it. She also has a somatic approach, which is working with the body. So there's a lot of resources out there for working with parts. And if this appeals to you, if you think this will be helpful, I really encourage you to check out those resources. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, comment. If you have any suggestions, if you want me to do more videos like this working with parts, I very well could in the future. So thank you again for tuning in. And if you got something out of this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more practices, a lot of growth and integration work in the future. And it's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you.